welcome. I'm David Rubin, the Brown Foundation Curator of Contemporary Art here at SEMA, and it's a real pleasure tonight to welcome our special guest, Sudi Sharifi. As I'm sure you know, Sudi is one of the artists in the Jamil Prize exhibition, which is on the third floor. If you haven't seen it, you can see it after the conversation. And uh, she's based in Houston, Texas. But we're going to begin our dialogue. All right, let me see if I remember which button to push. Yes. Uh, going back to the, the very beginning, Sudi. So um, you were born in Tehran, was it? Tehran, yes. Yes. So uh, speak, speak to the mic and... <laughs> Tell us a little bit about um, your beginnings. We'll look at the next photo here, <laughs> and you can tell us about your family background. Okay. Uh, yes, I was born in Tehran, and um, I was there until 17 years old, and then I had a chance to come to America, a very small town in New Jersey, as an AF AFS student. And um, during the Shah's, Shah's time, of course, this, this program has been discontinued after the revolution. And um, that year actually changed my whole life. You know, I was this, you know, grow in the Middle East, coming to America, experiencing, you know, high school. Um, so it was a very great experience. And I went back to Iran. And, um, Can we just interrupt for one minute? Could, could you tell a little bit about who who are in the photos there, so we know is, who? We... Uh, actually, the left one. If you is, can just look on here. They're seeing the same yeah. thing you are. Uh, are my mother and the four sisters in the 1930s, and this is my mom's um, wedding picture. And these are actually during the 1970s where the Shah was trying to modernize the whole country, and I was actually growing up at that time. So uh, the one with the, all the girls is in an all-girls camp, and I'm on the second one on the lower <laughs> And uh, the other one is uh, with my husband, uh, who is uh, uh, the one with the mustache. So, so let's get back then to what, when you were studying here, and then you went back, and then you had to come back. So I had to come back to Iran and uh, finish my high school there, and I met my husband, and we both came to University of Texas to, for him to finish his master's degrees, and for me to uh, sort of start the college. Um, and then the revolution happened, and he got a job in Houston, and I stayed, I, I actually transferred to University of Houston and graduated uh, with an undergraduate in Bachelor of Science in Engineering, actually, at that time. As uh, you know, um, being an immigrant's child, you either have to be a doctor or an engineer. So at that time, I didn't have any choices. <laughs> I was an engineer. I, I never you know, really liked what I was doing. So after my first child, I went back to school, and I started doing photography. And I was actually uh, studying uh, feminism, but Western feminism, of course. And, um, and I had stayed in America and had not gone back to Iran for 21 years. So my life had changed a lot. And I think the life in Iran had changed a lot. Um, after 21 years, I went back as a photographer. Um, and um, sort of the first thing actually attracted me was that the fact that I had to cover myself because I came out before the revolution, so I wasn't used to covering myself. And when I was talking to my friends and you know people my age in the family, they still had issues with covering themselves. And then one thing that struck me was the, were the stories that I had heard from my mother and grandmother that during Shah's father, actually the women had to remove, uh, they were forced to remove their cover, their hijab. And uh, my grandmother did not go out for a whole month, actually didn't take a sh bath during the whole month because there was public baths, and he felt nude if, he, if sh she felt, she felt nude if she w went out. So 50 years later, I felt like uh, this government is actually forcing women to cover themselves. So I, I was working on the idea of the body of a woman, and I felt like the, actually the um, power of a patriarchy is always exercised why up you know the body of a woman whether it's dressing or undressing and it's really a little bit like America also where capitalism actually works with the body of woman and sort of sell the body of woman and um, 
in, in, my, in my birth country also, the dressing and undressing actually attracted me. So I started my first series, which was uh, the self-portrait series. Uh, are we going to look at some of these? Uh, okay, let's, know, where, let's where you're you ready to start into the work then. Okay. Yeah. So um, this, is this is actually the, um, flag series. the flag series. I can talk about this a little bit. Um, you tend to work in series, right? Yes. Uh, and they're not, always, they're not always chronologic, linearly chronological. You kind of go back and forth. That's is that true. right? That's true. Whatever actually is the issue of that time and in, in sort of want to express it. Like this one actually started after 9-11. And um, I was, during my self-portraits, I was always exercising of how would how had my life would have changed if I had stayed in Iran. So there were some issues that I was trying to resolve with my you know, birth country. But after 9-11, I sort of started thinking of myself, not as an only Iranian American, but a Muslim American. And uh, you know, I always sort of explored of how the Muslim actually see themselves why have this bigger picture of, of American landscape and how it has this um, actually image has changed after 9-11 and how do they see themselves after 9-11. So I used a lot of uh, symbols, American f um, flag symbols which came out after 9-11 and it was all over and for me it was very curious because I saw like a bikini in a shape of a, a flag and you know masks and different things and in in Iran, you would never see anything like that. So I sort of also were curious about how capitalism work with politics, you know, and showing the uh, and the whole idea of the fear. I think it came out is in shape of flags and you know decals and you know text about you know how patriotic we are. So as an Iranian American, I wanted to say like in God we trust. I I actually saw a. a bumper sticker says, in God we trust. And I wanted to sort of bring that out and wrote it in Farsi or Arabic, which is a very, also a very popular um, sentence, in God we trust. So in the background is, in God we trust, but I am actually portraying myself as an, you know, a Muslim American. So this is how the series actually started. And I used different kind of paraphernalia, uh, different objects, uh, flag objects, and you use it as a self-portrait, mostly uh, there are self self portraits, but um, are these are, these are not self portraits, though. No, the no. the left hand one left one is, but the right one is not actually. Okay, I mean I'm intrigued by the the way that you're using the flag motif in a very subtle fashion in these. Yeah. And were you sort of actively looking for flag? Yes. Uh, I have a collection flag of American flag symbols. Yes, I yes. do have them. Because to me, they are the most interesting. You know, I find them in antique shops and uh, all sorts of different places, you know, uh, and I sort of use them for my photographs, yes. Mm -hmm. And how about these? Who are, who are, now, there's a play, of course, on American Gothic. And yeah. I might point out we have um, Gordon Parks's. Um, response to American Gothic in the gallery right outside the um, auditorium, so be sure and look at that. But tell us um, about these two images. Also, you know, uh, these, the American Gothic one came out in, I did an installation in <coughs> We the People in 2008 when we, are, we were having the election. And it was really the idea of war also was in the mind of everybody. So I wanted to, uh, sort of explore who are the Muslim Americans, not only Iranian Americans. So I stayed with a lot of Muslim young men and female in, at the University of Houston, also in the private spaces, and also at the events. And I wanted to sort of explore what, how do they feel as, as this sort of a young Americans, and how do they see themselves vis-a-vis -vis a bigger picture of American society. So I stayed with them, I took photographs with them, um, and you know, American Gothic is a very iconic image, so I wanted to portray as an, so as also a Muslim American identity as an American Gothic, so. And the left one, of course, was taken in a soccer field. I saw many Muslim women with their hijab, and you know, and the, and the boys were playing with the other, you know, American boys, and I. So, I, so were these um, youth who were actually born in the United States? Yes. 
And so how did they feel? I mean, how did, you know, what, how would you des de describe their feelings of identity? It was very funny their, their because of, of my, identity. my installation, and you will, have, you will see an image. Uh, I stayed with them, I took photographs with them, and then I found out that they have the Facebook pages. In their Facebook pages, they made fun of themselves being American. They used um, a Muslim American. They used, um, if you can go to that image, actually, it would be interesting. Uh, this one here? Uh, no. Oh, backwards. Uh, I think it's the installation where... Uh, oh, you want me to flash forward? Yeah. Do okay. Have, I think you have that it's, image. It's a ways. <laughs> well, okay, hold on, we'll find it. I've because set these, these up. All, these I've set these up chronologically. Is yeah. this the one or no? No, it's the next one. This these one. actually. Yeah. These are actually. I took the text from the Facebook pages of the Muslim American, and they were playing and the nuances of the language, like uh, you know. Taking it's, advertising. It's like, so you know they were making fun of each other and they were talking to each other. So actually, I used those those texts. Like, is your father a terrorist because you are the bomb? You know. Um, uh, Hey, you know, you want a date? I got them from Mecca, you know. It was so funny. I just thought that they were, like, making fun of themselves. So I just put the, all these texts with the images in the installation uh, just to open up the conversation of, a, I think, a community of Muslim Americans who are sort of invisible in our community in Houston. And it did open up a you know, conversation with the humor. Of course, you bring more people to talk about you know, different issues. So it was, what, what I think percentage, it was sort of successful. What percentage of the Houston population would you say is Muslim? You know, I don't know the, you don't know. the figures. But mm -hmm. I know we have a very large population of Muslim Americans. Mm -hmm. And the Muslim Americans, of course, the Iranian Americans are all most of them, a majority of them who are in America, they are the ones who came here before the revolution. The doors were closed right after the revolution. So when I actually started working with the Muslim Americans, I could not find any Iranian, you know, Americans who were actually, like, you know, being in the mosques or practicing Muslim. They are mostly from the secular part of the, you know, Shah's regime. Hmm. So. Okay, and this woman, is that you? No. No, I didn't think so. Yeah. But, um, so United We Stand is all, you know, these words that I saw after the 9-11 in the, you know, decals and bumper stickers, and I wanted sort of to use that as sort of questioning the identity of a Muslim American, and so I used the flag. Okay, so now we'll move into the self-portraits and... Yeah, these are the first, after I went back, after 21 years, and things had changed, and I told you about how women were covering, so I started questioning, like, how would have my life changed if I had stayed in Iran? And so I started the whole set of self-portraits. And with that, I also started a sort of an artistic conversation with my, you know, native country. It's like, um, like, there are some issues about diaspora that I'm still questioning because my work has some kind of a social and political edge, but I really, mostly, I'm really questioning myself, my identity, you know, who, you know, how am I Muslim, am I American, how do I deal with this um, sort of propaganda media after 9-11. So there are many of them actually came about, about after that. Sudi, uh, most of your work is in color, but these are in black and white. Why did you decide to do these in black and white? Well, first of all, I was just, you know, I loved black and white, and the digital, had, the digital was not as popular when I started this series. I loved the idea of color because I think the most of the Muslim countries try to force the black and white, whereas the whole country is really in color. So I wanted to emphasize that more. These were just, I just liked the idea of the black and white, and that's why I started it. But I really went back to the color immediately. So there was nearly no specific reason for it being black and white. I know people like it very much black and white, but I <laughs> really like the color more, because I want to sort of subvert the idea of a Muslim country being just in black and white. You know, that's all we see in the media, in the newspaper, you know, hmm. on the television. And so this one's in full-blown color. Yes. 
And of course, um, and is there a specific, me, specific art historical reference here? Yes, of course. <laughs> And you know, I did actually study this whole series, and uh, you know, the old artist, the Goya. This is Goya, of course, and um, me. You know, this is digitally, digitally manipulated, of course. Um, but, so you know, when you're me manipulating, here, me before, when, you know, what would I've, I looked like? You know, if I was in Iran, what would I've looked like? If after I stayed in America and that sort of thing. So a little bit about your process when you're manipulating digitally. Are you pulling in dim imagery from different sources and then photoshopping them together, or are you just enhancing a shot that you take? Uh, both. Both. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've planned an image, and I photograph it, and I want it exactly the same. And that comes from my education being, you know, in art history in America, because mm -hmm. very sometimes they are very stylized, and. So my method is very Western, but my subject matter are Middle Eastern, you know, because of course I'm an Iranian American who have been here for such a long time, educated here. Goes, I go back very often. I, you know, I stay with the, for a long time in Iran to be able to research uh, some issues and you know start a series. So these are manipulated, yes. Um, but this one, was, this one was very much planned, actually. Mm -hmm. Some of them, no. Some of them, I do take a lot of photographs. Uh, Iran inspires me a lot. Uh, there are many issues, as, and, and that's my American side. Because I was trained here, and I'm very familiar with the images. Uh, when I go back, I, you know, I look at things that might be mundane to an average Iranian. But because I see some issues in there, I start photographing, and they come out really beautifully. And you know, they actually address the issues that I, I'm talking about. Whereas, you know, some artists who have lived in Iran and stayed in Iran, maybe they don't have the same point of view uh, because they haven't, you know, been educated in America. In America, I guess. Um, so I do take a lot of photographs, and sometimes I use the photographs. I have a whole bank of photographs that I go back to, and sometimes I just plan it and. Stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, these series, are, one of them is still a self-portrait. The other one, I did a um, Muslim teenagers and a she and he series. I think the one, um, the shadow one, is actually is uh, from the she and he series, which I actually explored the relationship because, of course, the Islamic government tried to you know, enforce the segregation between men and women, but they do meet at certain places and they do date. So I sometimes have to cover, you know, their faces so I can be able, I will be able to show them mm. and depict them. So that's where the other one actually came in. All right, so this now, is the Muslim Teenager series. Yeah, these actually came about when I went back to Iran after my first self-portrait series, then I came back, I went back to Iran, and I realized that, you know, there's always, the, I got very interested in public and private spaces, because in Iran, you walk on the streets, if you're a tourist, you're walking on the street, everybody is abiding by the rules of the dress codes, you know, men are not wearing shorts, women are all covered head to toe, so you really don't see what is actually in the private homes of the contemporary Iranian household. And when I was there, I was looking at the, specifically the teenagers, who they were, how they were interacting in the environment with each other. And I got very interested. I thought, there's not really much difference between them and my own daughter, who was growing up as a teenager in America. So I got very interested. I wanted to show, sort of give you guys a the viewer in the West, a privileged glance at these private homes because everything was happening. You know, Western values, Western clothing, Western music was going on. So it's a very, this, this separation is even more exaggerated after the Iranian revolution. So I wanted to depict that and sort of show you what's going on inside the houses. Um, women are not allowed to smoke outside. A lot of women smoke inside. So I mm. wanted to show that, you know. They are watching all this, you know, like Greece uh, that's very popular in America. So they're, you know, sort of pretty much up to date. And I was actually very surprised at it. <laughs> this is Revlon. What's happening here? 
This one was taken in an abandoned house, in a resort house uh, that was actually abandoned by somebody who left after the revolution. <clears throat> I knew that there were lots of dating that was happening in the abandoned spaces between male and female, uh, away from the moral, pol moral police. So I wanted, again, I see these issues and I want to depict them. So I wanted to depict this, uh, and I saw this beautiful building, so I said, I'm, I like to show you know what's going on in these kind of places. So I wanted to depict that. And what happened was I had usually a lot of girls and this, young girls who are with me and I pose them for these, some of these images that are very stylized and uh, staged. And I wanted to pose them with a guy. And I couldn't find a guy. So I asked the Afghan boy who was actually working for this family, I said, would you like to pose for me? And he said, okay, but none of the girls wanted to pose with him. You know, it was so strange, you know, because I don't know whether he was a different social class or they didn't want to, uh, uh, you know, they were not going to be shown, but they just refused. So I had to put myself actually in there and photograph. Oh. <laughs> so that's me. How funny. <laughs> now, you, you tend to but look. But I had, you know, the idea and I wanted to fo depict it, so. Well, you, you tend to also be showing the connection between pop culture and and the contemporary life there, but also you yourself perhaps are influenced by pop culture. Did you, exactly. were you thinking of the Led Zeppelin song when you titled this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, thought so, okay. Um, okay, so um, also from the same series. The same series, okay, this Mr. and Mrs. Okay, these are nieces of my husband, and that was the first day of school. I had never seen the girls <clears throat> and the boys you know, dress up for the uniform. And I thought that was very interesting. And I realized that just in the recent times, they used to be only dark, dark clothing for women, whether they were young or old. And actually, that was a source of depression for many young women. So finally, the government decided that they're going to have a little bit color in the uniforms. So I, this was the first day of school, and I wanted to photograph them. Because for me also, who had lived away, this was very interesting. You know, the uniforms of the boys and the girls were very interesting. Hmm. And what's going on here? <laughs> you know, the girls actually like play with each other. They are very interesting. Their self-image. So once on the roof, uh, I saw this girl try to you know put the put the other ponytail on the hair, and this you know wind was blowing. So it was a kind of abstract way of looking the hijab. So I wanted to. Photograph it uh, while she was looking at it. You know, they're just playing around, and it's very interesting because when I do actually stage these girls, they take the cue and actually make the final tableau. Although it's very staged, and I know what I want, I really don't decide the final tableau. They actually are very willing, and they have seen the, I guess, images from the popular culture, internet, so they are actually cooperating with me to, you know, f make the final tableau. So some of them, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get to one of them that it happened. Um, I think I still have some more teenage series. This is no, a I think we had to edit it down a little okay. bit. But in any case, so now we move to an entirely different subject yeah, of this prayer. Is, it is time for prayer, and I did, uh, I was commissioned with the, from the city of Houston to do a portrait of the Muslim Americans in uh, Houston. And uh, I stayed at the University of Houston, <coughs> religious centers, tried to work with them very hard. Uh, the, you know, when I was in the private spaces, in Iran, I had no problem. They just wanted to be photographed. With the Muslim Americans, I had a little bit more difficulty because they were worried about showing their hair. You know, if they, they were in these beautiful outfits and they were like dancing and playing music. And I wanted to depict that because, of course, we don't get to see the private homes of the Muslim Americans and what is happening uh, in there. But I had to be very careful. Um, and I had to censor myself a little bit when I was doing that. But it's still, I think, open the conversation, uh, you know, between the, uh, you know, mu for the Muslim Americans in Houston. So, so were there any obstacles to, to being able to take these photographs? I had many obstacles. They had to uh, actually review all the images before they allow me to, you know, make my installations. Uh, I had to ask the parents for permission. I, you know, they, they looked at me, of course, you know, as like a, 
they knew they knew that I was Muslim. I, uh, you know, of course, I was much more secular than them, but they.